So I'm going to go through the basics of uh, training segmentation models and some of the uh, theory behind some of the models utilized. So the anatomy of a neural net comprises an input layer, which is the entry point for data into the neural network. This is where uh, all of your images, which are pre-processed, are going to enter the neural network. We have the weights and biases. So those are the parameters that are learned during the training process. They amplify or dampen the input signal, influencing the network's output. We have optimizers. Optimizers are extremely important and allow for the model to actually learn. So some examples of optimizers include stochastic gradient descent, Adam and RMS prop. And depending on the type of problem that you're working on, you would choose the optimizer appropriately. These optimizers are algorithms that adjust the weights of the connections within the network and minimize the loss function. The activation function is where nonlinearity comes into a neural network. So they're nonlinear functions that determine the output of a neural network. You want to know um, how you've scaled your parameters and consider those when you're training and picking an optimizer and activation function. The loss function is also super important. So you can have custom, custom loss functions, or you can utilize um, very simple loss functions. They're basically metrics that determine the difference between the network's prediction and the actual target. So for regression-based tasks, that would be a mean squared error. And for classification tasks, it would be something like cross entropy. And then the output layer is where uh, the output is produced at the end of the neural network. Depending on the type of output that you want, whether that's a binary classification, a multi-class classification, or a regression, the shape of the output layer would be different. So CNNs are basically the backbone of any computer vision algorithm. Um, they were developed by Jan LeCun for zip code recognition at AT&T Bell Labs in 1989. Uh, they're fairly simple. Uh, they're composed of an input layer which holds pixel values. So for example, let's say that you have a 224 by 224 by three image, which would encode uh, red, green, blue. That would be your input size. Uh, the convolutional layer basically uh, takes a block of pixels and convolves them. So you can use um, a max pulling operation or some operation to take a block of pixels and then uh, convolve them and then pull them and then pass them to the next layer. So the activation function is typically something like ReLU. Uh, ReLU in particular is mapped between zero and one and it nullifies negative values. The pulling layer basically introduces a way to take the block of pixels that are being convolved to a single parameter. The fully connected layer links all the neurons to the previous layer's activations for reasoning. And the output layer is typically a softmax layer, which allows for actually getting class prob probability outputs. So this would allow for knowing prediction probability, like how probable it is that a prediction belongs to a certain class. So some additional techniques that are useful are dropouts and batch normalization to help prevent overfitting and aid training. Input layers, which capture basic features, so you're learning very simple features in the first layers like uh, edges. And then as you evolve the network and make it deeper, you can learn uh, more complex features like shapes and um, more complex uh, patterns. But let me jump into UNETs. So UNETs were developed at the University of Freiburg, Germany for, med for biomedical image segmentation. So these are actually basically a class of CNN, which includes an encoder and decoder network. So the encoder is basically a bunch of repeated three by three convolutions with a ReLU activation and then um, a max pulling layer. It's a bunch of CNNs stitched together with encoders and decoders being used to learn certain features and then uh, accurately uh, learn segmentations. So there's also skip connections, which link the encoder and the decoder layers. But the idea is that you want to share some features between the encoder and decoder layers. And basically, you have your input block, your encoding, and then decoding. And the final layer is a one-by-one -one, uh, convolution for class mapping. And this is a very effective algorithm for small training sets. And it allows for uh, segmenting up to pixel um, 
wise values. So you can learn pixel by pixel the appropriate class for segmentation. It's very precise. I'm going to jump into training a unit. This is an example code, which will be provided to everybody at the end. I'm just going to go ahead and get this started. I'm actually utilizing a unit from Monai. Monai is a set of packages created by NVIDIA. Uh, these packages are useful for biomedical imaging, and they have a bunch of predefined networks, such as units available. Uh, I'm just going through the Jupyter Notebook, and we will go through the training process with this model. I'm importing the unit, so I don't need to define it myself. And I'm importing a couple of different metrics like the dice metric and dice loss, which I'll be using um, as the loss function and as a metric for evaluating uh, the performance of this unit model. This will take a little while to load. So I'll just step through uh, some of the outputs that are already there. I'm using an example data set. This is a freely available uh, spleen segmentation data set. I'm um, downloading and extracting it, so I'm compressing it here in this directory. You can use whatever data set you have as well. So if you have a set of images that you want to use, you would just change some of the code later. So I'm giving it a path to the training images and the labels. We have a dictionary comprising the images and labels, and these are all nii.gz files. So we're looking at creating a train test split. So I'm doing it manually. You can also do it with a uh, train test split the function from SK Learn. I'm just doing it manually using slicing. I'm also setting a deterministic seed. This is important for um, having reproducible code. And I'm setting up a bunch of transforms. These transforms are necessary for this unit architecture. So I'm setting up a bunch of composed transformations, which um, allow for creating a more generalized neural net. These are necessary for pre-processing the image. So uh, we loaded the data, we split it into a train test split, and now we're applying transforms. These are scaling, cropping, scaling, and reorientation. So once we have the transforms set up, we can actually apply those within the data set. So we're creating a data set using cache data set, which is a uh, fairly fast, uh, operation for creating data sets from these larger files. We're also creating a data loader, which will hold the data set. And we're using a batch size of two here. Uh, when training a neural net, it makes sense to choose the largest batch size that fits in memory. This is a free parameter that can actually be tuned. And I would recommend choosing the largest that could fit in memory. But this is just an example code. Going forward, we're actually defining the device that we're going to be using, the type of model, so it's a unit with three spatial dimensions. We're setting the input and output channels, uh, the total number of channels, the strides, uh, the batch or the type of normalization, and we're passing the network to device. So we're defining the model, we're putting it on uh, the CUDA device, we're defining our loss function as a dice loss, we're defining the optimizer as Adam, and we're uh, defining the metric for evaluating the performance. Going forward, I'm just uh, giving some code here to say where we want to save our best models because within the training loop, we want to iterate through and we want to make sure that we checkpoint by saving the best model weights as we find them. So this is the actual training function where we are setting a max number of epochs equal to 600. We're going to loop through and we're going to actually take a batch of data first zero, the optimizer, and then we're going to take the outputs as the um, inputs to the model. So whatever the model returns for the given batch, and we're evaluating our loss as uh, the loss function applied on the outputs versus the labels. And then we do a backward step, we do an optimizer step, and then we look at the uh, epic loss. So we're doing that for the training, and we're also doing that for validation. Uh, if the metric is improved on, then we save the model and continue the training process uh, until we go through the full number of epochs. So this is the result of training this model um, over 600 epochs. The best mean die score was 0 0.94. We were trying to get towards one. So this has a fairly high die score, uh, and the best training was achieved at epoch 228. 
the model uh, is scoring fairly well at uh, segmenting. So I don't have the loss curves here plotted yet. But uh, this code takes a little while to run, but it's freely available to everybody. So I'll be sharing it after this. As part of the code, we plot the loss curves and we have an inference class that we can use to take the model weights, load them, and then do predictions. So we can use this for evaluating uh, a single sample in the future. So you can take this inference code and reuse it on new data points as well. And this code will be available to everybody at the end of this on the GitHub uh, repo. As this is running, we'll continue through the slides. Let me introduce MedSAM. So MedSAM introduces a universal approach to medical image segmentation across modalities and diseases. So MedSAM is actually a fine-tuned uh, multimodal model that was developed as the segment anything model by Meta last year. Um, so this was developed for general segmentation purposes for segmenting dogs, cats, people out of images, but then it was fine-tuned for medical imaging, uh, utilizing primarily uh, MR and CT uh, images. Uh, part of this allows for taking an input image with a textual label, encoding it, and allowing for uh, decoding and receiving segmentations. So there's a couple of ways that you can utilize MedSAM. So you can use it with um, actual text. So for example, uh, it should be possible to actually say uh, segment out the spleen or segment out this structure because it's a multimodal model that has images and text associated. So it knows what certain structures are. It also works with bounding boxes. You can immediately just drag bounding boxes over certain structures and it knows what comprises um, an organ or what comprises a structure of interest. This is a very useful model for segmentation out of the box or for fine tuning your own models. So if you have imaging data available, you can fine tune MedSAM with your own imaging data. It utilizes a large data set for training. It comprises a ton of different radiological images, but beyond radiological images, it used surgical imaging and other imaging as well. So it's almost like a universal model for medical segmentation. I also have a notebook here for MedSAM as well. I'm uh, installing uh, the MedSAM libraries from Git and using it out of the box, essentially. So I'm defining some functions here for showing the mask, showing the bounding box, and doing inference. So these are some starter functions that are necessary. And I'm pulling the model weights here. Uh, we're loading the model and the image. So we have the checkpoint file that we're using. We have the device that we're going to use for inference. We're defining the model with uh, the particular VITB uh, checkpoint that we're going to be using. We can then take an image, pre-process it a little bit. So we're resizing and then we're converting it to a tensor. We can then do apply the MedSAM model. So we say with torch no grad for inference, and we can actually apply the model, um, and then we can get a segmentation. So I'm defining a bounding box here, and I'm using that box as the bounding box for this. We're looking at the MedSAM segmentation results here. And basically I drew a box around this feature or ROI and it was able to very well segment out the ROI. This will be provided as code. And I also do have an inference example as well that exists as a hugging face space that will be shared with everybody after this. Happy to also sit down with people one-on-one -on -one and teach them how to train these models. So MedSAM, is a very useful model. I've just kind of shown a very basic thing, but if there's interest in terms of fine tuning or utilizing it in a more complex way, let me know and I'm happy to sit down with users and teach them how to use it. With UNETs, I'm happy to sit down with users and show them how to use this code and get it running on the CHPC as well. But these are just starter codes that I'm providing as Jupyter Notebooks that are running in Google Colab. But that's it for me in terms of slides. If there's any questions, I'm happy to take questions from the audience. If there's no questions, I'll stop the presentation. This uh, presentation will be available on YouTube 
along with the slides, which will be available on our GitHub repo. And um, the code examples will also be listed there. If uh, anyone would like to schedule time with me to sit down and go through these codes for your own projects, uh, feel free to email me or otherwise schedule time through my Calendly, which is available on the docs.chpc.wustl.edu uh, website. Thank you all very much and hope you have a wonderful